Hello my dear friends, this is a painting cat. My name is Catherine. Welcome on my tutorial. We're going to paint today with watercolor. And uh, this is a demonstration of tutorial, a real-time version of it. You can find on my Patreon. Just follow links down below. Paper I use today. This is a Lana Corel, 300 grams, and uh, it has uh, some texture on it. It's not just a very smooth paper, I'd say. And uh, this is a cotton. Uh, it's up to you. If you will use a paper uh, with a cotton, it's giving uh, more ability to layer colors. If you will choose um, wooden pulp, paper i'd say it's more easy to learn some techniques because uh, from those kind well we have uh, half cotton or have no cotton at all uh, on a paper it's more easy to lift up colors from it so it's just easy to remove spots you don't like or fix some tiny mistakes. If you feel confident enough, I'd say go for cotton uh, this time. Uh, I wet all the area, all the sheet of paper, and uh, right now, you know, I'm just thinking about uh, colors I'm gonna use. This is gonna be a mound landscape, but not just a realistic one. Uh, for example, if we want to go for realistic landscape, it's nice to have some reference photos around, something like this, where we can get um, realistic details. But this is, uh, this mound landscape, it's how I keep them in the memory, you know? It's more idealistic view in my mind and uh, it's a really freestyle painting. Uh, I just put some colors here and there. Blue and a violet mostly on the area for future sky and a green and some pink you can notice on the area closer to us where we are gonna create some maybe mounds, maybe fields. And uh, I dried everything with a hair dryer next step. It's just a plastic, piece of plastic wrap. Uh, let's get some blue and a violet, I believe, because very far mounds, they are usually very light, cloudy, mm, misty. So colors have to be light enough and just put some prints from your plastic wrap like this and try to imagine it's a mount already so just give it a shape the proper shape see this is a, a right side and this is another tiny hill and here the left side. Uh, let's create direction of um, light here. And uh, I choose the light from the left to the right. So left side of the mounts gonna be lighter than the left ones. About contrast. Uh, mounts far from us. They are not contrasted as well. High contrast, let's keep it for the foreground. Background have to be very, very soft. Well, I like this too. Let's get another one. Bit different color. I put there more violet and then I transfer to the model lake red and maybe some orange uh, colors into it. Uh, here again I just want to share to you most important in my view details and uh, what you have to remember about while you going for freestyle landscapes with watercolor step by step with all comments what colors i use what brushes techniques uh, you can find in a real-time tutorial 
Uh, it's really complicated to concentrate enough while you're painting to keep in your imagination all details you want to include in your landscape. Instead of just keeping in a memory, I like to plan some, here it's a hills, right on the left and the right side. Even if right now it's not the full power of a color of the um, shadows of stones here, but I already planning a hill on the right side and it's giving me opportunity to plan well a middle ground. Middle ground um, can be so different here. It can be uh, blooming fields in uh, mounds. It can be, oh, uh, let's create waterfall. It's just a nice uh, detail for landscape. And by the way, I spend uh, time with my family last week uh, in the mounds. Uh, and I saw them so many, so many waterfalls, big and small, with a really clear water that was sparkling with the blue, or it was a water with the sand looking really like an amber and a light. They can be different. Here I want to go for classic. Let's paint uh, water with uh, blue and a green. And look i'm using dry brush technique i even holding my brush in a different way uh, we can hold it as a pan right but sometimes imagine you put your brush on a table and you picking from the table with all your fingers at once this way you will handle your brush with a side touch and this way your brush strokes will go not from the tip of the brush but you will go with the side of the brush this way you have to go really fast when i'm going fast it doesn't mean i'm i'm not trying my best you know i still do but the technique requesting this speed if you follow if you're painting really slow, you're giving opportunity to watercolor to flow everywhere in every tiny spots on a paper. If you're going really fast, like imagine this, you uh, will give watercolor only to tiny spots to the uh, paper. That's how it's need to be. Go fast if you're going for dry brush technique. And you can see right now I created like a stripe, um, kind of thick stripe in the center and it's gonna be a water and on the left and the right I created green hills and violet uh, stones. Why it's so violet? Mm, to be honest, I don't like and uh, I just can't recommend to use a black to create a stones and a mountain. This way, black for itself, it's like a color with no color. It's too grayscale. And when you mix mixing, uh, for example, blue and a black, clear black, lamb black. Black will add color of blue. It will desaturate blue. Yes, you get a deeper tone, but the price really high. Instead of just a black, mixing a black, we can go a different way. Take a look on the right stripe on my um, colors. You can see right stripe there really deep. But only one color there, natural black. So that means you can pick any deep looking color and replace black for this color. I choose violet. I like how it's uh, combining with orange, uh, cadmium orange, for example. Also, I like how it's uh, combined with uh, 
yellow green. Um, I love how it's looking together with a model like red. Many, many points why I like to put uh, violet as a shadows for stones. Stones, basically, I planned right now with dark colors and light areas I filled with um, wet on wet colors, wet on wet technique. I mixed some green, uh, orange and red, model like red. I love how different techniques look together and I have two with so different characters here. First, it's a dry brush, it's re looking really sharp, really pointy, and another one, it's a very popular and soft looking wet on wet. Try to combine, try to analyze uh, what you want to express on a paper, if it's a fields, if it's a soft grass, if it's a um, uh, late spring, as we saw with uh, my husband and kids, uh, it was right now on my place, it's a summer, but when you're going in the mounds, they usually, uh, seasons, uh, they're usually late, so we catch the late uh, spring. It's so beautiful, grasses and uh, blooming flowers are soft. So for fields here, I choose wet on wet technique. But stones more sharp. They are. Um, it was a volcano before we visited uh, Caucasus mounts, and stones there so deep, black, and sharp. So this technique, dry brush technique, I believe, expressing the type of stones from there really perfect. Uh, I don't like to feel a line of the hill just uh, smooth, so I created a tiny few trees there with a pointy brush with number zero, it can be number one, for example. And right now I don't have a layers of mounds of stones, so I'm gonna create them. Important notice. If you want to layer and layer your watercolor, be sure you drying layers w really well. I use a hair dry usually and uh, I like not to cut these moments from the video. Yes, I'm speeding them up a little bit, but still I want to mm, let you know at what moments I use a hair dryer to make the whole composition dry. Uh, it's nice way to control watery fast with a hair dryer. So that's why I actually prefer this way instead of just a natural uh, drying process. So I already have here colors I like as a background layer. See, some orange, some green. And on top of it, I can create a structure of stones with the dry brushing. It can be some fir trees here. Try not to mm, make a long brush strokes. Instead of it, try to create a shape of the fir tree with a tiny points, like top, 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 top with your brush. This way, um, uh, trees, fir trees will look more fluffy and natural. Mm, let's see how it's going. By the way, if you want to go for freestyle paintings like this, first it's a juicy colors, no black, important white. Um, second, it's a combination of different techniques. It's looking fresh, interesting and not boring. Third, it's a uh, spend time to step back. Time to time, maybe each five minutes, 10 minutes. Try to check from the distance to analyze if painting going to the way you like. If it looks similar to those view you have in your imagination. Uh, not all paintings I like to create till the end. 
uh, let's say to fill all the paper with the colors sometimes I really can stop in a middle of the process because I'm happy enough with the result and I'm scary to ruin the filling and then the details can look not that perfect but still the filling from the landscape if I like it I would stop and if I wanna tell something more I would like to grab another piece of paper that's how to important to control yourself to understand from the distant if picture you see if a viewer you like if it's going to the right way by the way my friends if you join me to the patreon there you can have my support if you have any doubts about um, steps you need to still do or maybe better to stop at some moment just send me painting as it is right now it's really handy if we have a second view a second opinion about painting and together we can just uh, understand better if uh, painting already completed or uh, maybe it will be nice to fix some details or bring new details. Uh, if you shy to post uh, your paintings on a community wall there, you have my mail, you can mail me your painting and we can talk about it private. About uh, fir trees here, take a look. It's not a really fir tree, not the exact shape. I'd say instead of it, I like to use a hand brush to put some spots to create a texture, fluffy texture on a paper like this. See, I'm just touching very gently paper with my hand brush. It's already a fir tree, but it's have no shape. And right now, try to give it a shape, but with outer color. Don't touch a shape of fir tree inside. Like this. See? Let's create another one. I'm just filling areas around. And giving it more shadow. Can you see this fir trees? Uh, because I really like how it's looking right now. Fir tree have some green inside, some oh <laughs> my watercolor flying around because because right now I grabbed a um, really big brush. It's a calligraphy one. I like to bring new colors fresh colors on top with it but i have to paint kind of fast uh, what i like about these brushes mm, it's a natural bristle it's kind of rough i'd say but in instead of a uh, synthetic this brush holding water not only inside but some of it outside of the brush this way i can glaze my painting with uh, extra colors and uh, I cannot touch the previous layers. Take a look. See, I'm glazing with the transparent layers, but all details I created before, of course, painting had to be dry. Look, I'm not losing a dry brushing there. But still, I can glaze on top with an extra color. Maybe here. Oh, let's bring another one here. And this brush not touching a previous colors. I uh, will drop a link for this brush. I'd say mm, practice makes perfect with brushes like this because a size looking really scary but once you get an idea once you catch the feeling how it goes uh, i just can't imagine my painting with big brushes like this anymore 
Uh, well, next uh, we will create here more few trees on the left and the right. This way we can give with uh, some color. Um, more bright, more light, I'd say, not just uh, with a dark violet. Mm, personally, I like combining a green color and a cadmium orange, maybe because, you know, I try to analyze why I use it so much. I believe because it's looking as on oranges, fresh orange, fruit and green leaves on it. Maybe it gives me uh, feelings of fresh. Anyway, I like how it's looking together. Nice about uh, this type, this style of landscapes. You can put colors you prefer more. If you like, if you don't like uh, green and orange, you can go for blue and uh, maybe pink colors here. They all will look perfect. Again, because it's not a realistic landscape, lots of colors, they all saturated, and uh, I'm just bringing a lot of details, sharp thin lines for water on a waterfall, and my painting done. My friends, if you still have any questions, don't be shy to ask me in the comments. Also, for those who need a sketch for this landscape you can find it on my patreon as well it's available for my subscribers if you would like to follow this tutorial or uh, just to create singular style compositions i'd say my recommendation is uh, don't try to copy detail by detail color by color uh, instead of it, try to express yourself on a paper with those uh, advices I share to you here. We have so many beautiful colors in watercolor box. And just don't be scared to try something new, to combine techniques in a way you didn't try before. This is a watercolor freestyle after all. My friends, if you enjoyed this tutorial, join me on my YouTube channel. Paint with me, it's uh, just lots of fun to create um, paintings. Also, welcome on my Patreon and I will be really happy to see your paintings. If you will share your paintings through the Instagram, please put hashtag PaintyCat. This way uh, I will find your paintings easy. Thank you for joining me today. I'll catch you on my next tutorials. It was a painting cat. I wish you all the best. Bye bye.